I have an old friend, Aaron Bear. He leads Citizens for Community Values, which is Ohio's leading advocacy group for Christians in the state and other people of faith in the state on a variety of fronts. He's a native of Warren, Ohio, by the way, so he's got that going for him, too, though he went to Turner instead of Blessed Sacrament. And uh, Aaron's married to a Stillers fan, but we won't bring up Marie. But, uh, but he joins us this morning because he's doing the Lord's work this week. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Great. You're good to talk to you, man. I want to know when you when you got your Twitter handle if you could if you forgot your name was spelled A A R O N because it's only A A R B A E R. No, that that's right. But the thing about that is you, you grow up and as a millennial with watching Michael Jordan, you want to be like Mike. You want to be Air Jordan all the time. So I'm not Air Jordan. I'm I'm Air Bear, and that, that's I've stuck with that for the last fifteen twenty years now. Air Bear spelled A A R B A E R. Yeah, right. yeah, okay, <laughs> that, that's what happens when you go to Turner. Uh, exactly. Aaron, I want to know. Don't, don't learn to spell too good over there. Yeah, I want to. I want to know about what you're up to. That the headline says Christian schools sue Lucas County Health Board, claiming closings violate religious freedoms. First of all, where is Lucas County? Second of all, what's the health board, and what have they done? Yeah, so Lucas County. This is Toledo County. So think Northwest Ohio. This is really where the uh, the rivalry between Michigan and Ohio State came out of. But that's a whole other issue. Uh, And and what we have here is one more example of government bureaucrats, and especially these health boards that are unelected government bureaucrats, really infringing upon religious liberty, stopping religious instruction. And we've had sort of a slew of cases here at the Supreme Court that have indicated the court's going a really great way of having a, a, I would say, a proper view of religious expression, recognizing that religious expression or, or religious conduct is not just something that happens on Sunday for an hour and a half or so, but something that can go on throughout the week, especially uh, in the Catholic tradition uh, of religious instruction, uh, of ensuring that children are getting sort of five-day-a-week religious instruction. Uh, so the court's been really signaling good direct, you know, good movement in this direction. And in the midst of all that, you had Lucas County, Toledo, basically, coming out and saying, hey, we're going to just, for the next five weeks, uh, we're going to shut down all instruction grades 7 through 12 in our county, even though uh, they left pretty much everything else open right now. You could go to the Hollywood Casino and gamble. You could go to uh, the, the Straight No Chaser concert, which actually sounds kind of fun in a couple of weeks in, in Toledo. But they said religious instruction, instruction generally, but really the only instruction still going on in Lucas County was religious, religious schools. They have to shut down. That's a bridge too far. And we think uh, we wanted to cut this off now before other counties and other st- and the, the state as a whole, which we don't really think would, but other counties uh, get some bad ideas about doing this, too. No, Aaron Bear, my, my lawyer in me wants to know a couple of questions. Were all public schools already closed when and only uh, Christian schools open when this order came down? So by our count, there were only in the entire uh, county, only two public schools that were open, one of which was a charter school. So the vast majority of children in Lucas County were not in schools. And really the only schools for the most part that were still open were religious. So there's an argument that even though it does not say so, its purpose was to close Christian schools. Second question, is there anything in the record that indicates a particular animus towards Christian schools? On the record itself, we, we don't have one of these cases like the Masterpiece Cakes case uh, out of Colorado where, you know, you had the Civil Rights Commission just saying terrible things about Jack Phillips' faith. We don't, we don't have that on the record per se. Uh, but what we really do have is is the county basically ignoring all the other level levers that they could pull to fight the spread of the virus. That actually, we, where we see evidence of the virus spreading in other public gatherings, there's no evidence. They even acknowledge this in their resolution. There is no evidence of spread in these schools. And you know, Lucas County itself doesn't it is one of the better counties in terms of spread right now. There's other places, you know, Akron Canton area on the northeast side has way more spread than Lucas County, and they've not taken this extreme measure. Only well, don't Lucas misread County me. I'm, I'm actually kind of glad if you're only the Christian schools primarily are open. There might be a couple of secular schools, but you might be able to infer hostility from that. But even if you can't, this is a pure then case of shutting down religious instruction. Now, I'm a product of Roman Catholic education, proud product of John F. Kennedy High School. We had an hour of religion a day. I had an hour of religion a day from first through 12th grade because doctrine matters to Orthodox Catholicism. And you get it whether you want it or not. You get it every single day. I see that a Jesuit high school is among your plaintiffs. Now, there are people will argue that the Jesuits don't really do this right, but that's a <laughs> joke among Catholics. I had Franciscan third order regular, and they do it right. Uh, so they are shutting down religious instruction when they do this. 
No, absolutely. And that was actually one of the things that our, our initial filing, we went into great detail to show it's both St. John Jesuits and Emmanuel Christian and Monclova Christian Academy. Religious instruction is interwoven through all of their, their classes. Some of them actually start every class with prayer. You know, they'll pull kids aside in the middle of the class for prayer if something's going on. I mean, you really can't, you know, segregate the, the, the religious instruction aspect of their education from their geography or geometry, whatever else they're teaching that given day. Uh, and, and that's, I mean, you and I know that's kind of common sense. You don't, people are not siloed off like that, especially people of faith. So did they close any newspapers? Because the First <laughs> Amendment would, of course, make you think they would never dare do that, correct? No, it, it, exactly. For, for some reason, this just tends to be the one part of the First Amendment that uh, these orders are, are going after. And, and again, like I said, it's just about, we, we have Instagram pictures. You know, people just throw everything up on social media today. We have Instagram pictures of people having parties at the at the casino or, or people being out having large lifting gatherings over at, at, at gyms and things with no masks and things like that. And these schools have been so cautious. I don't know any school that's not taking this seriously, but we also know the devastating impact of closing schools on kids. Remote learning for all the heroic work going on has been, is it, just a failure. It's, it's not work. I, uh, I have so, one other question for you. Do any of these high schools, the three high schools that are Christian, do they have newspapers? That's a good question. I actually don't know that. I, I would imagine, especially St. John's Jesuit, well, they're a pretty good. I would students. amend your complaint to note that, by the way. If there's a student-run <laughs> newspaper, I would amend your complaint. So I think you've got a straight-up free exercise clause claim. Where is the court right now? Are you in the Superior Court of Lucas County? By the way, the, the, the Honorable Hugh Hewitt presided over the Superior Court. Court of Common Pleas, actually, it's called, in yeah. Ashtabula County, Jefferson County, for many, many years. Uh, who Are you in the Court of Common Pleas? No, we, we went to the Northern District of Ohio, and we, we, we got Judge Helmick, uh, who is a very fair-minded judge. We've had one, we had a conference. We have oral arguments today. So uh, you're in federal court. court that quickly. Yeah, in federal court, in, in the Northern District before Judge Helmick. Who appointed that judge? That is an Obama appointee. And I will tell you, our first conversation with him, uh, it, he was very, uh, very fair. We, we're, we're actually we're, we're very excited about the conversation we're going to have with Judge Helmick because we have some really good facts on our side. And this will be a very powerful victory if we get one. Are you on, will you appeal it if you don't to the Sixth Circuit? We, we went into this thing. We're going to ride this thing all the way out to the end. This is what, what we're asking kids to bear the burden of fighting this crisis right now, and we're sacrificing liberties along the way. And so we're ready to go to this all the way to the Supreme Court. If you, we have a, you have a board at Citizens for Community Values. Are they 100 percent in? They are all. We had a board meeting last week, and they signed off on the additional expense because we're doing this. This was not a budgeted expense for us. We retained the best counsel. Graydon Head and Richie, Rob Portman's old firm, uh, and we're we're fighting this out to the end. So we're going to throw whatever we got to at it. Anybody from Warren, Ohio, on your board? Not at this. I you you got to help me find the good folks from from Warren that I could get over there. You know, all, all my friends in, in Warren are teachers and pastors and those folks. We gotta You're a Columbus guy. The Columbus people in. hate Warren and Youngstown. I know that. You're a Columbus guy now. That you're just I, I, always against us. So your board is all in. You will take it to the Sixth Circuit if necessary. You'll seek certiorari. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And, and we think even with uh, what the Danville Christian Academy case in Kentucky, we might actually get a, a quicker win with, with that case as well because Kavanaugh is looking at that right now. I appreciate it, Aaron. I hope every What's the website for Citizens for Community Values so they can stay appraised of this case? Real simple, ccv.org. That is too simple. ccv.org? Yep, that's right, ccv.org. That, that's a lot easier than A-A-R-B-A-E-R. <laughs> Really? I mean, the, some, someone from Turner didn't come up with ccv.org because that actually makes sense, not A-A-R-B-A-A-R. But tell the Steelers fan in your house to fix your Twitter handle, will you? Aaron, great to talk to you. Merry Christmas to you, friend. Hey, Merry Christmas to you. I want to go back and tell you what.